because this sport has changed my life. Like there's no telling where we would be if we hadn't come in touch with softball, right? Or sports. And so that's what kind of started my drive. And so it's the whole motivation behind the foundation is creating access, creating opportunity, bringing it to a community, bringing it to girls who wouldn't come across it on a day-to-day basis. You're listening to the Gold Standard Podcast. I'm your host, three-time Olympian and motivational speaker, Leah Amico. On this show, we're going to dig deep to unlock what it actually takes to build a foundation for greatness. If you're an ambitious person with big vision, but you feel like fear is holding you back, get ready for some major breakthroughs. Let's dive in. Welcome to the Gold Standard Podcast. I am very excited to introduce my guest today. It is four-time first-team All-American, just softball superstar, softball royalty, my Olympic teammate and shortstop Natasha Watley. She's a two-time Olympian. She played in the 2004 Olympic Games where we won the gold medal and the 2008 Olympic Games in Beijing. She was a national champion at the University of Arizona. She was also so, um, inducted into the UCLA Athletics Hall of Fame. In 2003, Natasha was the Pac-10 Player of the Year, the Honda Sports Award winner, and the nation's top female athlete winning the Honda Cup for all female athletes in the entire country. Um, she's played professionally in the United States as well as overseas. I am so excited to talk to Natasha Watley. Tosh, I'm so happy to have you on today. Liam, you're so cute. And you're like, softball royalty I, you know and I tell you every single time I see you that you are my softball royalty like you are who I looked up to so this is this is an honor and fun that we get to have this conversation so thank you for having me yes yeah, so well I'm excited to hear what you're going to share um, with everybody that's listening today because I know you have so much wisdom and again I I'm so thankful I continued playing after I had my son, Jake, and got to have that last run um, playing first base. You were our shortstop and truly was, I'll never forget us on that um, podium after winning the gold and thinking, okay, we are passing the baton. It's now time for all these young superstars, Natasha, Tariah, Jenny Finch, Jessica Mendoza, Kat Osterman, and all the younger athletes um, just coming up. I knew USA softball was in good hands. Okay, so I want to talk a little bit outside of the softball field, because, you know, we get to talk about that a lot, but let's talk first and foremost um, about the Natasha Watley Foundation and the league that you run. Tell me a little bit about that. Gosh, where do I begin? Um, I think it's been awesome. It's been an awesome learning experience. I I started in 2009, right after the 08 Olympics. Um, The story that I share is I went on a speaking tour after the two Olympics going around with my medals and just saying like, oh my gosh, softball's so great. Went to the college of my dreams, Um, you know, accomplished a dream come true, winning medals and um, I'll never forget it. And it's in South LA, inner city, predominantly uh, African-American students at this high school. One little African-American girl, she raises her hand and she's like, Miss Natasha, your story sounds so cool, but what is softball? Like we never, all my girls, we like, we never heard of softball. And for the, for me, that was like this awakening moment. Like I grew up 45 minutes South. So you're just going to tell me just based on the location of where we grew up that you don't know what softball is, you know? So, um, for that moment on, it was like, this is what I have to do. Like these girls need to know what this game is. This sport has changed my life. Like there's no telling where we would be if we hadn't come in touch with softball. Right. Or sports. And so that's what kind of started my drive. And so it's the whole motivation behind the foundation is creating access, creating opportunity, bringing it to a community, bringing it to girls who wouldn't come across it on a day to day basis. Um, whether they go and they play in college, like, and they go on and continue to play, like, that's icing on the cake. But I think we know all the tangibles that you get from playing softball. And so that's what it's about for me is making sure that they're learning teamwork, that they're learning something about commitment, committing to something, starting and finishing. Like that's the, that's actually like the biggest thing, you know, and um, just hoping that they fall in love with it. And so that's kind of where we're at. Um, But the foundation itself, I mean, I 
<laughs> have learned so much in terms of running a nonprofit, fundraising, yes. running a board, like all the things that I'm like, okay, I didn't, I not, I didn't necessarily sign up for this. I just wanted to like bring this game. Um, but it's been like the most fulfilling work um, that I've ever done um, outside of playing the game. So that's what it's all about. Is that's pretty much it. Well, I love it. And, and one of the things that I, I think that I've learned too, is we had our team on the field and we stood on that podium because everybody around us did their job and we brought our skills to the table. So what has that looked like to build a team that's helped you to run a nonprofit and to do maybe some of these other skills that, you know, you're allowing them to help you um, to make the foundation run as, as smooth as possible. Yeah. And I think that's what we've learned from playing is that teamwork thing, right? And like, I know that I can't, this thing can't go with just me. Yeah, it's my name on this foundation, Tosh Valley Foundation, but there is a team of board members behind me. We just hired our first full-time staff member this past year, um, Lexi. I have to give her a shout out. She does a lot for the foundation. So um, just all the stuff that goes on on the back end, like there really is, has to be a team um, behind every good effort, you know, things don't happen by yourself on your own. And for every great accomplishment that we've achieved, there's a whole team behind us. Right. So, um, I think that's the one thing that I have learned from our past playing life or past playing career, playing career. You need to have support. You need to have a team. Um, things can't happen by yourself. Yeah. I think that's so important, no matter what area of, of life we're in, whatever company you're a part of, whatever program, whatever organization. Um, what's your greatest success story that's come out of your league? Like maybe somebody who came through and had this amazing new opportunity they never would have come across. Yeah, there's been actually so many. Um, two years ago, we had our first um, young lady receive a full ride scholarship to South Carolina Claflin, um, Janelle. She grew up here in South LA, had her first start in the league. Um, there's been a few girls who have received um, scholarships after her. Um, she's probably the one that sticks out the most because I actually remember her uh, when she was younger and just falling in love with the game and then just having her parents just asking what can we do? Like, how do we, she like loves this. Like, where do we go next? Like, what do we do? Like, you know, so just like that part of, of it and helping them navigate that, that's been super special because again, you know, they don't know what this game, where, where it could take them and like how to get there and what to do. Um, that's been one. Um, and another similar family who's up and on the rise. And I think we have to keep a lookout for her. Her name is Amani, Amani awesome. Ferris. And same thing. Her older sister was one of our essay winners and she came out to one of our MPF pro league games. Like when they would win their essay contest, I would fly them out. And so the older sister came, but the younger sister is the one who is actually like really taking on the game and like, she's killing it in travel ball. Like every team wants her. Um, and so I think we're going to, she's in eighth grade going into ninth. And so I think in the next couple of years, like we're going to see her be a blue chip recruit we're gonna see her go and play at hopefully UCLA but we'll see <laughs> <laughs> I know and I I do love Natasha even though UCLA and Arizona were rivals and enemies off the field we love each other and on Team USA we all we all unite <laughs> so totally. that is amazing and you saying that just makes me think it's so true. Like you're thinking, okay, her older sister comes in and we're educating these families and we're helping them to see this new world of opportunities and possibilities. But then I don't think about you, you think about these families that does trickle down and the younger athletes now all of a sudden are exposed at a younger age, which we know the benefit and the blessing of that because having more experiences and more years and learning this game longer really can open up more possibilities. We will be looking for Amani for sure. Um, Tell me a little bit um, about the importance to you, because we are right now recording this during Black History Month, and I know you're posting a lot through your social media, um, just of athletes who really have um, impacted our sport in a massive way at the elite level. And I know for you, that is always very, very important to be able to have that representation and people seeing, you know, okay, I can do that too. They have done that. And so how important, you know, is all of that to you and how does that play in? It is so huge. And it's, it's so huge. It's obviously one of those things when I was playing, I mean, like I knew it was important. Um, but then after you get out and 
um, you kind of reflect, you realize how important that is for a young lady just to, to resonate with you, to like be able to relate with you. Cause I didn't necessarily have that. I didn't have any athletes that like looked like me and I had strong women. I had, you know, obviously I had you, I had Lisa, um, all of these women that like, wow, they play with such passion. They play with such skill. Like I want to be that, but I mean, it just takes it to another degree when you actually like can see that you belong and that there is a place for you because someone else has done it. Like, okay, well, if Tosh can do it, so can I. And so I think that that has been kind of my purpose post playing is like, how can we make this game more visible um, in the representation, be more visible for young girls um, who are coming up through the ranks to see that there's a place for them. I love that. And you are making such a huge impact. I know you do a lot with MLB as well. And just, you know, opening up those doors of opportunities. Okay. I want to take a little shift right now too, because I know that you have gotten into um, the world of real estate a little bit. And so talk to me about two booze and a flip this, you know, this new fun project that you have going on. Tell me more. And my boyfriend, he just like, just came upstairs and you just said that. And so he's just like, <laughs> dancing back here but um yeah <laughs> he's the other boo that's the other boo that's the, the two boos right there um oh my gosh it has been so fun so talk about teammates like that's a whole nother arena where it's so necessary like uh, we both have had separate passions of real estate. And so like just driving by, like, that's how it all started. You know, he's actually flipped homes before in Ohio. And so it's always been on my bucket list. Like I want to flip a home. I want to be Joanna and Chip. Um, <laughs> and not necessarily that, that, that they flip, but renovate a home from, yeah. you know, that they're from start to finish. But um, that's how it started. We would drive together as we're dating and, you know, like, let's just drive down. Like we have a couple, another hour before our reservation. Like, let's just drive down this neighborhood, you know, like, look at these homes. Like, I just like want to go in and I want to see what they look like. Um, and it's just, it's fun because I think from being an athlete, I am very result oriented. And so like, if I do this repeatedly or take these steps, like there will be payout at the end, you know, obviously you don't know where you're going to get the payout. Um, you know, like as an athlete, we, we are on this journey, but there's also like, you can see transformation. If I work on the outside pitch every single day, like I know eventually like it's going to, it's going to catch up to me. Right. And so same thing, like just putting this work in these homes, like eventually, like we're going to transform it and be able to put it on the market and make a nice home for a family. So like that whole process, like it just makes me so excited. I love it. Um, but doing it with him is it's fun. We have so much fun, but it's like this teamwork thing and he's good at some stuff. I'm not like, he's obviously well-versed in some like construction stuff and plumbing and like those things. But I'm like into like, what finishes are we going to put? Like what tile, like, you know, when we get a stager, what's our color theme here, you know? So it, like just bouncing that off and just having that teammate, um, it's just been so fun to be able to use things from our athlete experiences into this world. So it's fun. It's a lot of fun. It is, it really is. Like you said, feeding off of each other, you know, you had the skill set I didn't have, but I love that I hit behind you and you would use your speed and you're just <laughs> amazing bat skills and your placement. And then I could come and try to move you over. And then Lisa Fernandez or, you know, Crystal Bustos would come and hit you in and just everybody had their role and their strengths. And, and to me, that's the beauty, no matter what we're doing, um, really understanding our strengths and being able to utilize it to the fullest. So that is wonderful. Okay. So we're going to shift just a little bit now again, and we're going to use talk about the gold standard. So that's what this podcast is named. And um, I want to just talk to people who really live out the gold standard in everything that they do. Obviously we were gold medalists and as Olympians, um, gold was the only option. So when you hear the phrase, the gold standard, what, what does that make, you know, what comes to mind for you? Gosh, I mean, I think of expectations. I think of, um, I don't know. The thing that came to mind is like how you do one thing is how you do everything. And so like when you have that gold standard, like whether I'm flipping a house or whether I'm hitting an outside pitch, like I'm going to have the same standard or the same energy or the same, um, I'm going to show up the same, no matter what the activity is. So I, I love the gold standard. I, I love it because 
that's how we should approach life. I, th I think we shouldn't take things lightly, you know, like just come at everything with like full intensity and you're going to reap the benefits of that, like how you approach anything. I think if you come at it half, you know, like just kind of going through the motions, like that's what you're going to get on the, on the back end. So um, just kind of go in all in. Um, I, I love the gold standard because I, I, for me, it's an expectation, you know, um, and kind of approaching anything in life, doing the same thing at that high intensity level. The Gold Standard Podcast is brought to you by Major Media League. Major Media League is a revolutionary competitive app launching in June 2022. This app gives softball athletes a platform to showcase their skills by participating in challenges and having the chance to win prizes and scholarships. This is also an opportunity to promote your own talent. For all the athletes out there, it's free to join. So go sign up today at www.majormedialeague.com. The link is also in the show notes. You'll be notified when the Major Media League app launches. So get prepared for the unbelievable opportunity that lies ahead to grow your brand as an athlete. See, and this is why I know we were world-class athletes because we, we did, we all kind of had that at heart, right? It was like every single day that approach that we took and then off the field and just even just how um, we all related to each other. I really feel like it was the fact that we had, we had team chemistry and we had work ethic and we had that expectation that every one of us knew we could keep being you know better no matter what we were doing. And so I love that. Okay. So the way I break the gold standard down is an acronym. So each letter um, has a meaning. And so G stands for goals. O stands for overcoming obstacles. L stands for leadership. And D is dedication and drive. And so I'm just going to kind of break that down and just ask you a couple questions in regards to each one. And so, so G for goals, um, I'm just a big believer on like, you kind of got to know where you want to end up in order to get on the path to get there. So for you, um, what did goal setting look like? first of all, maybe to become a collegiate athlete. And then maybe, you know, did at the same time, did you also have the goal of becoming an Olympi Olympian? What, what did that look like to you? Yeah. I mean, I think when I look back at my youth career, I think I was, I did a really good, or my parents did a really good job of make, allowing me just to be a kid and like to set goals for like what's right in front of me. So I, I don't feel like I ever looked too far. So in like, you know, junior high, like I wanted to be Allison McCutcheon, like Allison Johnson. She went to my high school, um, one of the, the best slappers ever. So it yes. was like, that was the goal that was right in front of me. I want to play for Woodbridge. I want to be the leadoff hitter for Woodbridge. I want to be just like her. Okay. So it's like, bam. Okay. You know, so it's just like kind of going through each step. So when I was in junior high, I wasn't looking at college. I wasn't looking at being an Olympian. Like I knew those things existed. So I feel like it helped me just stay in those moments and be present and just enjoy being a kid in that process and like getting better just to get to that next step. And, um, and that's what I like to say when you're having your goals is just like, what's that first baby step? What's that next one? Cause sometimes people just want to take these huge leaps. And then that's kind of where, you know, the letdown comes and like the, you know, expectations just, they fall because you're not able to take those huge leaps. Um, so definitely I believe in goal setting, but I think when I, think back, it was just literally having these immediate, got to high school. Okay. I want to be a collegiate athlete. And right before I went to college, who did I get to see play? I got to see you play and I'm um, playing for the Olympics. Like, okay. Like that's where I want to be next, you know? So just being able to have these immediate goals that are attainable. Um, so in a sense are baby steps, but not taking like these huge, huge leaps. Yes. I, and I, I so agree with that because I feel like it's the same, like you make your, your travel ball team and it's like, okay, we want to win nationals, but you got to win state first and then go to nationals. And then, you know, you get in high school and it was like, I want to make varsity. <laughs> and, and you talk about Allison Johnson, McCutcheon's her married last name. I got the chance to play for Allison. Um, you know, of course we would have been happy if you came to Arizona also, we could have played together longer, but <laughs> I know, I know it wasn't meant to be UCLA needed you and it was the perfect fit for you. Um, okay. What about, what about, um, now in your professional life, has that played into, you know, what you do with the foundation or with the real estate? Absolutely. I mean, even with just like the whole house flipping, it's like, okay, let's just take on one. Okay. We finished one. Now we're taking on two <laughs> we're like in two houses at right now. So, um, just literally like just baby stepping 
each thing. And then hopefully we can like look back and like, wow, we've accomplished so much, but just not trying to, what's the saying, chew, whatever, chew more than you can handle or whatever, (laughs) take up more than you can handle. (laughs) So that's exactly what, you know, we've been trying to do. And especially with the foundation, it was like, okay, there was such a long runway before we even had that first young lady get a scholarship, you know? And so now we're, you know, after her, we've probably had about three or four that have happened. So that was like the first big thing. Like we just, I want one of our girls who have come through our league to go to college, you know, and, and play and play softball. Yes. So just take, I I love that. And and I think it is, it's these building blocks because nothing, Nothing can replace experience. You know, mm-hmm. you, you think like, oh, I'd love to do that someday. Okay, well, what are all the things I need to do before I get to that point? And so it is having those short-term things that, yeah, maybe one day I'll end up there, like you said, mm-hmm. but the key is what am I doing today? What am I doing now? Right. That's awesome. Okay, so so O is overcoming obstacles. And I personally believe that if we can learn to take hard times and struggles and trials and use them to our advantage to become stronger and learn from it literally can actually turn obstacles into opportunities. Mm -hmm. So softball wise, what would you say was your hardest challenge or struggle that you faced? What was there anything? I mean, there's a ton of things. I mean, when I was younger, I would say injuries, but I think the core of my obstacles were me getting in my own way in terms of, oh gosh, just, I don't know. I, I guess that sometimes, you know, I, I, I could show up and get away with some things, you know, just being athletic and like, just really, really challenging myself and like coming outside of my comfort zone. Like I never wanted to be uncomfortable. Like I just didn't want that. Like, I just wanted to like, be good, be good, be good, be good, be good. But you know what I, you know, I think one of the things that like, I always admired about Lisa was she was so okay with being uncomfortable. And I think that was one of my biggest obstacles was like continuing to challenge myself to get to that next level. And I really don't think I really hit that until I went off to play in Japan. And that was like later at the end of my career because I was so uncomfortable being in another country. And I think then that's when I really took off as an athlete. Like, I mean, I got better and um, it wasn't like those visual obstacles where, and, and I did, I had an obstacle of, I had the yips and I think you were my, I don't know if you were coaching me that yet during, you were that. going through it just a little bit when I coached you in the pro league. Yeah. So that was a huge obstacle of like, it was like a gut check. Like I'm an Olympian and I can't throw to first, uh, you know? And so I think that like, that was a, another, um, transition period where, I think I grew as an athlete as I can contribute in a whole nother way. And in Japan, I was just like this offensive threat that like, I couldn't get out, which is in a positive way. Like I couldn't get out because I had to change my mindset and I had to overcome this obstacle. And I think I became a better teammate kind of going through, through that hurdle. Yeah, that's, that's powerful. And I love how you just talked about like kind of pushing past the comfort zone because I, it made me think of like kids in in high school where it comes super easy to them. And so they're just like, okay, I'm going through the motions because it is easy. But then you have these kids who struggle and they kind of learn that like, they're always uncomfortable, not by choice necessarily, but but again, for anybody, whatever we're good at in order to be the greatest at it and the best at it and live by that gold standard, it really is kind of mm-hmm. almost like taking us to another level. And what does that look like? And, and like you said, Lisa Fernandez, I mean, truly was constantly pushing herself outside the box. And I felt like training with her too. It, it also just showed me a ton as well. I learned so much from <laughs> training with her and watching her train and just seeing her mindset. Uh, what about again, in the business world, um, is there anything that you've kind of seen that's maybe been, been a struggle? Oh gosh. I mean, just before we got on this, it's like, you know, we have so much experiences and have so much that we want to share with the world, but sometimes you got to put yourself out there and that's uncomfortable. Um, definitely, definitely, you know, marketing yourself and just really in my personality, I'm, you know, not the most vocal and like, not that I want to be like seen all the time, but Um, I do know that there's fulfillment in connecting with a young lady or another woman of, you know, here's my experiences, here's my story. Um, And to be able to get that opportunity to share that, like, (laughs) you got to kind of put yourself out there first of like, 
well, I do have these things that, you know, have affected me and um, I've experienced. And so I think just in the business world, I think it's been mainly articulating myself, um, you know, obviously negotiation, speaking up for myself of just really like, what do I want my brand to be? Like, what do I want to represent in this world? And I think that that's, it's been a learning experience because in softball, it's like, you could just show up to the game, you can practice your little skills and you can show up and you can control all of those things. But in the business world, there's this whole other thing that you can't control. Um, you can't control how people take to you. You can't control if they give you the contract or if they say yes. Um, so you've just got to manage. Um, I don't know if, I, if this is making sense, but I think just kind of what you're putting out there, you can only control that. I, I absolutely relate and understand and agree <laughs> with everything you're saying. And What's so neat is through the years, because I do know you and, and Tosh was our shortstop, but Tosh was quiet and she, you know, you just play the game and she's just so talented and, and, but, you know, personality wise, you're not the loud one, like yelling in everybody's ears, me and Lisa were the loud ones on the corners, <laughs> but, but I watched just this growth happen and I, and just knowing you, I know that it's pushed you out of your comfort zone, but literally I've just, it's been awesome. And, and for me, like encouraging, like Leah, step out of your comfort zone in some of these areas, because I do love to talk, but again, sometimes <laughs> with social media stuff and putting things out there, like that's also not the comfort. Like you, like, no, like, let's just play. Let's show what we practice on and we'll let, we'll let it do its talking, but right. you have to do a little more talking and, right. and kind of figure out that. And so I, I love you talking about the branding because that has been something that is challenging, but I don't know about you. It kind of takes me back to those days of like, okay, rise to the challenge then. Yep. What, what is this challenge? Show me yep. what I need to do. Okay. I'm going to figure it out and I'm going to do it. Well, I'm not going to just do it. 100%, 100%. If I'm going to do it, I'm going to go all in. So go all okay. in. Love it. So we talked a little bit about the leadership part and, um, and you, you'd mentioned, obviously there was nobody that necessarily that you looked up that looked like you, right. And, and you mentioned a couple of players, but how important, like maybe, maybe a certain coach that um, really impacted you, like because I just really believe like for us to, to be the best and to grow, there is that mentoring component, right. That is so important because, you know, you only know what you know so far, right. And then experience, you gain wisdom, but when you can see what other people have learned and take that in, I, I feel like your growth can happen quicker. So who's a mentor or somebody that has impacted you in a powerful way? Easy. Sue, Sue Inquist. Sue Inquist literally just talked to her yesterday. Um, I talked to her all the time, like outside of my parents, like she's the next tier of a next tier, the next person that I go to, if there's a big business decision or anything, like she's just really been a sounding board, a mentor. Um, I mean, she, yeah, she taught me backhands and forehands and like how to hit outside pitch. I mean, that's like now like cloudy, but <laughs> taught me how to speak up, to articulate, how to do a public speaking. She's the first person who taught me how to create a PDF. And that, you know, that was years ago, but like just a PDF, you know, like Tasha, you, if you're going to send a proposal or send a correct, <laughs> you can't send a word document, you're going to make a PDF, you know, and just these little things that are so valuable. And I mean, I could talk about her for days, but my favorite story that I'm just going to share real quick, and that you probably heard it, um, but my freshman year in college and what you just described, like I was a mute. I don't, I didn't talk. Like I just literally was like, let me just show up, give me the ball, give me the bat. And I will, I will do it, you know, but if you make me talk. I don't want to do it. So my freshman year, she would make me come in her office. She'd interview me on camera, but she would just make me talk about my day. What'd you learn today in class? Um, today we have practice yesterday, you know, you worked on outside pitches. So you're going to work on outside pitches again. Um, tell me where you are in that process. She would just make me talk. And I'm like, I would be so angry. And like, there's not a lot of things that make me angry, but it would make me so angry, Leah, when I had to walk to her office and I would just be like, I hate this. Like, I don't understand how this relates to me being a leadoff hitter. I don't understand how this relates to me being a defender, but now I get it. She was trying to make me uncomfortable and she was trying to make me get out of my comfort zone and not, yeah, I don't have to be a chatty Kathy, but definitely being able to just use your voice. Like she would always say one day, someone's going to want to hear what you have to say, Tasha. And this is why we're doing this one day. Someone's going to want to hear what you have to say. And, um, you're going to be able to 
talk to him and you'll be super comfortable and forever, forever grateful for her for doing that. I so love, that's, my, that's my C story. <laughs> yeah, I love that. And, and I mean, Sue is special to everybody in the sport. Um, and you're right. She's spoken around the country, around the world. She helped USA basketball, the women's team, and they just brought home the gold this past Olympics. And um, I love that it transcends. That's a very, very special person, not just coach that ultimately helps in everything, in every aspect. And, and I, to me, to be able to play for somebody like that, like you said, it didn't only make you a better player and one of the best athletes in the sport, it made you a better person and really well-rounded and well-versed. And I, I can just see, um, you know, she saw the greatness inside of you and she wanted everybody to be able to experience that. But again, if you were silent, people wouldn't be able to hear what made you tick and what helped you, you know? And so I, I think, you know, for me, I've watched, but I can only imagine what she feels as she's just seen this transformation. It's, it's amazing. Cause that's what great leaders do. All right. So the last letter is D and that's the dedication and drive. And I feel like just kind of that, that your, your why and the daily habits, the action piece. And so I just, what is like one of the, the main things that you would say, like a habit on a daily basis um, that helped you to become a world-class athlete and one of the, the best, you know, athletes as well as successful in the, the business world. Is there something, a habit that you have that you kind of approach each day um, that is a different, makes a difference? Yeah. I mean, definitely as an athlete, I mean, I think it was just working on the, on the little things, um, you know, or reps. I'm a big person of just like reps. Like how can I get reps? Like, I just like, I like confidence builders. I like to just feel good, but consistently like doing it consistently, doing it every single day, like that made me feel confident. Um, and I think in the business world, the same, I think even to, you know, I think one thing that I, have tried to do, or I was doing more, I'm not so much doing it now, but um, a big thing was like, and not, and it's hard to say that I did it every day, but hiring a videographer. Um, and I, like, I want to speak more and be more in front of, you know, an audience. And so hiring a videographer was like such a great rep exercise for me of just being able to articulate like everything that's inside of me, inside my brain, lessons that we've learned, um, and just kind of like, you know, writing down things to, I guess, rehearse for a videographer. And so I, I hired a videographer and I haven't done it so much lately, but being able to pr produce and put out videos, um, cause that was just something that I, it was, um, uh, obstacle for me of just being able to like speak and like be in front of a camera. And so, um, I think that was a habit was consistently meeting the videographer, and, but not so much now because now, because <laughs> I'm prego. <laughs> yes, yes, I know. Let's, let's talk about that really quick. I'm so excited. You're going to be a oh first time God. mom and you're it's having so... a baby girl. A baby girl. A baby what, girl. What are, what are you most excited about or what's kind of the feeling? Leah, I'm all over the place with like feelings. Like it's like, <laughs> it's, it's just honest. Like I, like, oh my gosh, I don't think I could be anybody's mother. You know, I just figured out how to take care of myself like last week, you know, so, <laughs> um, but I'm excited to just be able to have my own creation, I guess, and just be able to show her the world and like the way that I know it and that we know it. Um, that's what I'm most excited about. Um, I don't know if I'm excited about you know, all the other stuff, like <laughs> changing diapers. And like, those are <laughs> like the things that I have to wrap my head around. It comes like, with it. It comes with <laughs> it. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh my gosh, I'm going to have to like change your diapers and like, make sure she's fed. And like <laughs> those things like stress me out. Like, oh my gosh, like, you know, I, um, I, I'm sure it'll all be fine. And I just don't know what I don't know. So like, those are the things that are kind of making me nervous, but I just can't wait for her to get here and see what she looks like see her personality and just show her the world have you have you looked far enough ahead like are you are you going to encourage her to play softball one day <laughs> I like I don't think I will I mean more so I'm not going to push it on to her but definitely yes. going to introduce her to it like she and there's no way she can get away from it you know we're so <laughs> we're so in 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 the softball world so there's no way that she'll not know what it is but it'll definitely be her decision to continue playing. I'm going to like introduce it to her, but, um, yeah, I don't, 
I'm not like I'm raising the next softball athlete. Like, I don't think I have that mindset for sure. Yeah. Yes. I've had three boys and I've, it was all about finding what they love, what they were passionate at, what they were driven toward and supporting that, because I felt like that's what our parents did Mm -hmm. for us you know? Well, thank you so much for just sharing this wisdom. You're going to be, you're the best softball player, but you're going to be even an even better mom. I am so excited to watch you in that new role. And um, just for all that's ahead for you with these new memories and, and this whole new world that's, that's about to come. So thank you, Tosh, for um, sharing just, just your stories and your wisdom, um, because I think people do need to hear more from, from people like you. Oh, Leah, I love you. Thank you for having me. This is great. And I'm definitely going to be calling you for the, the mommy tips for sure. Like <laughs> what I do now. <laughs> that's right. That's right. It's, you got this. All right. Thank you everyone for watching um, the gold standard podcast and we'll see you all next time. Thank you. Thanks again for joining us for this episode of the gold standard podcast. If you enjoyed what you heard, please share it with a friend. You can post on social media and tag at Leah20USA or use hashtag gold standard podcast. Make sure you also subscribe so you get notified each week as a new episode releases. You can subscribe, rate, and review on Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen. We appreciate your reviews as they help encourage others to listen in. Until next time, live out the gold standard and keep turning your goals into reality.